to well reliably survive i guess Punja. choose your hero apparently cobalt's win rate with Pudge. sorry it took so long doing everything as a one-man show is some it takes some getting used to but apparently they do have a super high Pudge win rate and look at this aggressive first blood opening. Kobolds, they say YOLO. Run in with the Pudge. Who got the first blood? Okay, Detachment was the first blood by just half a second or something. Pudge, did he get a flash heap? I was too busy looking at who was the first blood to see. And now he's gonna get ran down, but if you got a flash heap, it's worth it. Otherwise, you're not happy with this. Obviously, he wants to die. Wait, he has a hook. Oh no, the tree is off the mark. Flash heap? No flash heap. Okay. Amazing form. 242. Ah, oh, this is the Kobolds. See, the, see when I say I love Kobolds because they're an entertaining team, that's what I mean. We have like three kills for Kobolds, two of which were Taoist favored, but it's not quite like holy shit, this Razor is gonna stomp everyone now. And Patch, yeah, that's Patch against Necro. We've talked about that being super hard and the Patch being a one only makes it worse. I think, wait a second. What about this mid matchup? Cause yeah, okay, stable. Well, now on the top lane, Razor does not like his lane stable. He's he's erratic, static electricity. He wants to flow 3D and punch detachment in the face, as well as Kagome. Oh my God, the damage, the humanity, the demon manatee, I guess. Rip Terrorblade. That's what you get for kicking off the war. Guys, I was traveling last week. Did I miss a patch or something? Why did he not did he not skill Flash Heap? What? Did he think he could just hook Tiny under tower and get a kill? Because that's the only way that's a good move right here. And if you do that, or well, get a kill. You don't Touch, trying to go ham, but he is the ham and they're trying to eat him. Marvel taken down by the puck elsewhere. Puck getting a double kill on top, oh my god, Pudge, Pudge, I was hoping for. Ench kinda missed micro there, could've had held the creep away, so you can hook, Oh, close one, but guess what, Necro, he's got an ultimate to work with, he can get that out on somebody low health. Yeah, that's not the one you want a Necro ult when Flash Heap, if Flash Heap wasn't on, it would've been an easy kill. Well, taking a good chunk of damage, as will the Ench and the creep, Kagome. It's quite low elf, has to be careful here. Also knows if you don't hit the creep, it's gonna body block you. But while Kagome is trying to secure himself from the creep, we get a dream coil toss combo. And instead, the Dragonite will he go down, double damage rune, but thanks to a bottle usage, he is able to escape. Terrorblade finds a fortunate solve there to keep him going. Pounding at me, to uh, like the enemy Marcy to try and kill me. And I wanted to, I want to like force staff, I, I think it was forced that myself to her, and like we traded places, and my team just messed up the Marcy while I, while, while I got out. So, you know, Marcy does have her moments. Oh, speaking of moments, Necrophos finally has his first kill on the patch, a much needed one. It's still gonna be a 2 for 1. And, yeah, two people are not worth two health regen. Patch obviously for every flash heap he has, he gets additional exponential value out of the heart of the rock. So that's really really sick. You know what else is really sick? Marvel going down like that, not even able to get a single spell out after initiating. Easy why? You're dying for that. Remember that Reaper type you threw at Patch? Yeah, he does. Thank you for the flash heap, sir. But Necrophos stacks until level 3 of the ultimate. They are incredibly Meh. Like at level 1 they're nice, or at level 1 ultimate, because now you actually do need the region, but at some point you have to 4 or 5 Reapside kills, and that's the mana region you need, and if you have mana region as Necropose, you're gonna be walking around at full health, just all game long. TP, looking to dive, orb detachment, dragged out of pause, Marvel, looking for more good amounts of magical damage into TZY with those Marcy combos. 
trying to slow the puck with an AoE for the combo. So charges because they're not making any kills. And it's not like he doesn't have a kill ability in his inventory waiting. Puck jumps in, gets insta dragon tailed. This is a chat dragon knight, he knows how important the range is. He blinked right on the puck to make sure the dragon tail is instant and he can't even respond in time. And then they press Unleashed just to make sure that Dazzle also goes tier 2 is traded for something here. But trading a tier 2 for a tier 1 isn't exactly the greatest when now a catapult wave with a Dragon Knight who has ulted and an enchanted creep army are approaching your tower. Look at this push. Ladies and gentlemen, for 16 minutes into the game this is some real tower pressure. And I had kind of missed that during the draft. Maybe this part was just picked up to make space. Beautiful hook speed and is going to die. That's another Necrophos ultimate stack. They don't even get a flash heap out of it. In exchange, Razor procs the BKB. Kind of regrets not, uh, not diving now, I bet. And they are going to back off. I don't think he's too happy with using the BKB like that. Oh, no, you don't. Don't just push our towers down. But Dragon Knight with the blink dagger and the push. Absolutely no problem, just slowly melting those buildings. Dragonite forced to press BKB, but with the Dream Coil, that means he's gonna be fine. Touch all he can do is hook somebody out of the coil, which is nice, but it's not enough to set something up. Necropose finds the ultimate, but once again on the touch, you can take it. Tiny goes down, has to buy back. 9k gold now for Cobalt. Cobalt, no. The enemy now has to get something out of there, and Cobalt just needs to cut their loss for this to be worth it. Netty goes down. 90 minute high ground push though. And as for cutting their lot, scan just to cover more Ravens area. Bottom tower is under attack. Ooh, both of them. Dodge the scan here, but Tesh is still gonna be found. Try to teleport out. No such luck. And touch hooks to make sure he gets two more strength. 18 strength is not bad. I dislike that they nerfed it. I think you could have just buffed the strength gain and actually give him damage reduction or some defensive prop property based on how much how much strength he has. Just made make touch scale even harder. Do what he does even better. Would have worked as well. But I like new patch. And we got the Marcy ultimate. Marcy realizes there is no way you don't take out the Witchblade. So YOLO it is. Well, you don't live once. Though a bit ironic as a demon who punishes people for, you know, doing what he does and all. And TZY, tick tock, tick tock. There goes a lot of his health. What help? I mean, there goes TZY. Dragon form level 3 means you can just chase whenever you feel like it. And not only that, but look who's diving in the back lines. It's Scotty, who is fat as hell and mad as hell. Now Terrorblade shows he comes online. But ladies and gentlemen, wait, wait why can't I see? I didn't know you couldn't, like, inspect people while they are respawning. Because does this look like the freaking pace of mercy to you? And Reaper Scythe number three, four, three. Okay, not bad, not bad. At least those stacks are actually gonna be big now. And Necro has some mana region to work with, where he can actually tear people to shreds. And that's gonna be difficult. Natty just walks up the high ground, says contest this. Puck says glad, he throws out the dream coil. They toss the enchantress back, enchantress already pressed the heal though, meaning she can't die. Neither can the tiny with shadow grave. Two immortal people duking it out who lives longer, enchantress will. But now Neddy, who's supposed to be tanky, probably just gonna die. He will die, that was only his first life. But that means the dragon form is now over. Did he make it over? Oh my god, no, and he dodged the hook. He just dodged his own teammate's hook and right into the reaper side he goes. Sorry, my man, half a millimeter too far away from the wall. He would have almost made it. 
on two occasions he would have lived, and he dodges both of them perfectly to precisely die by a millimeter there. Sometimes Volvo just wants you to die. Tiny goes down. Dezel goes down. Kagome. He's supposed to be the nightmare of this touch, but with all of his damage going to Razor, how can you fight to touch anymore? Puck, he is gonna try giving the Razor a run for his money, and that's just gonna mean Scotty Razor Ultra Kill. GG, well played. If they don't call it yet, I'm. Okay, okay, one more team fight. Let's go. A little more of. Oh no, he did. Never mind. I just didn't spot that. Yeah, you want to refresh the debuff on both racks, what I was getting at, but he did. It was just a creep in the way of the projectile. Dragon Knight. In he goes, but so does the Terror Bait, and gets with one of these two hits harder. It's definitely not the Terror Bait. Reapside comes in onto Mar Marvel. Marvel doesn't give a shit. Kagome gets hooked back. His fresh orbs are being crocked left and right. Kagome forced to run out. Shadow Grave, not enough to save him. Down goes the Terror Blade. PP able to survive for now. TZY not so lucky. And this is GG now for sure. Even if you creep cut the bottom lane for another 20 seconds till your tiny is back, in 20 seconds this engine is already gonna start crumbling and GG is finally called. Jesus, LBTS. I love them for this. They are such a motivated team. But I don't know. They are labs don't build a sheep stick. You could give a sheep stick to one of your supports, but good luck waiting for support to get a sheep stick. <laughs> Speaking of sheep sticks and picking them up, that's a hero who's definitely gonna look into a sheep. Oh, gotten the wave all the way back. Getting some gold. If you stand next to either one of these heroes really, but mostly the Nate's Prophet as he relies on his right clicks even more. The Treants as well, all of those are going to lose their damage. You just don't right click because what makes Nature's Prophet so good is you get a relatively high right click points edict. I'm way too stupid to play Oracle. Not my hero. Now Tiny, that I can do. Very complex hero. You need to press two whole buttons. And he, oh. The Tiny attack speed coming in again. Bite him in the ass. Meanwhile, Viper just denies himself against the neutral creeps. Necessary by sending a support or two over to Hakan while farming. And then when he, when he has the big stacks, fight non-stop. Not necessarily until the end of the game, but the mid-game. When Queen of Pain is the strongest, you need to utilize it. You need to win fights with the Queen of Pain that Terrorblade gets assist, gold and experience from. And you don't want Kagome to die. May also be worth to, worth to mention. He's sitting on 1.3k. Is this gonna be a Midas game? I think it could be a good Midas game. That would actually change things for the side of Kobold. Oh, speaking of changing things, you know what else will change things? A beautiful vacuum wall, but will it change things enough? Yes, it will. Two for one. Thanks to Scardi, being Scardi, and once again showing why I call him a playmaker. Nicely done. As now, Underlord gets burned, gets hit in the face. And such a cool lore for like dragons to just become less dangerous in a world full of adventurers that hunt dragons. But I can't wait for the, there to be other Mortimers. He must have some brothers. Maybe, uh oh. The final catch up attempt is gonna be enough. Cookie to turn around, toss PP is gonna go down. No time to blink out of that before the tower shot connect. Snapfire happy with that. A Snapfire for Queen of Pain, always a great track. it. The only thing that surprises me about the laning stage is we haven't seen all that many ganks, all that much roaming from the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain struggled in the lane, or at least it felt like more of a struggle than it actually was, but the lane looked really hard. And now you gotta farm, now you gotta get some more XP before you can go for those early kills. Speaking of early kills, on the top lane, Pitlord ultimate means reinforcements are there and TZY he just gets lost after a Viper gets traded for two. Darkseer dying is huge and even bigger. Is that Pitlord got himself a serious lead now. He makes it back into his lane. 
in time for lunch. Get some XP. Smoke up from the Queen of Pain plus Earth Spirit now. Smoke up for what? None other than Nature's Prophet. That's exactly the kill they need. They will get it. They throw down the portal to make absolutely sure they got the kill at the global combination plus the blink in. I mean, yeah, no matter how tanky you are, you can be a one with an instant escape and it's still not gonna be enough. Scotty, can he do it? Hasn't yet cast the surge, won't get to... Okay, okay, nice save from the Oracle. As now, Queen of Pain will get revenge for that kill being ruined. Earth Spirit will die in exchange and 3k gold lead for LBZS. Yes. As you can see, the terror. Ah, this is the kobolds I know and love. Confuse the caster, confuse the enemy, and confuse yourself because this is war, and in war you never know what happens. So if you don't know what you're doing, the enemy can't know what you're doing either. Words to live by, gentlemen. It's gotten me pretty far in life. It doesn't go too deep into the lore and the spell descriptions. Nothing cool for me to read out. However, Salad, he is gonna get normal punched up. And this is just what a normal punch does in Dark Seer's dimension, apparently. You punch someone and you get their ghost to beat the crap out of them for you. That's really cool. Imagine being able to do that in real life. Oh, PP. Pee -pee. Facing the power of the Snapfire Agonist chart. This is like such a good Snapfire core. Marvel. Yeah, like that. And now run. Freaking run. Everyone run. Tiny away, Salad. Try to kill Oracle. Oracle doesn't get the ultimate off on himself in time. No false promise means straight up dead. And now Nate's Prophet in a bit of trouble as well. Nate's Prophet without the Oracle, he's suddenly super squishy. I said I liked the Nate's Prophet pick, but I liked him because you could protect the hero, because there was backup for him. Without that backup, without... Yeah, this, this is what was supposed to happen when your core was gone on, and now, not now. Terrorblade, if he goes down, this is still not a bad fight, and they're trying to facilitate just that. Marvel is just gonna go down, however. And to make sure the Terrorblade does absolutely die, Snapfire will cast an ultimate and will pay with her life for it. Ooh, PP just got outplayed by Natty. That was sick. Look at him racing against Nate's Prophet and almost winning despite having a hard lane and everything. But then you play Terrorblade and you realize, oh crap, I got a micro so many illusit ones. Thunder is such a risky spell. Hey, this hero isn't all that easy to play. Marvel. Dodges the roll, which means Tetris is just gonna drop. Marvel will do drop for it, I think. But a nice save comes in at a normal punch from the Dark Seer to at least make Underlord's life a little more difficult. Teleport out from the Nature's Prop, who has the false promise, meaning he is able to turn around. But Bad Uziak, or however you pronounce that, on the Oracle, he isn't. Now down goes the Earth Spirit, and the fight is still gonna keep going. Queen of Pain, PP, he managed to get out. Two-man cliff with the vacuum. And Kagome, you may be a Chad Terrorblade, but you're now stuck up there for a while. And I think Kobolds are going to try to make your life difficult. We got another buyback. Onto the Earth Spirit as we got Queen of Pain dying, but now the Terrorblade finally gone on. And that cliff means Dark Seer gets Kobold the first significant lead of the game. And with it, Nate's Prophet Draft it obviously could already be the last salad. Running for his life. At least he was out of stun range, if just barely. Snap. Unable to chase. Still made space for the Nature's Prophet to be annoying. And just get more gold than the Terror Blake as best, as best you can. Salad, once again normal punch. Man, I can watch the animation all day. I don't know what the weird kanji has to do with it, but it's great. Unless that's like One Punch Man reference, which honestly wouldn't surprise me. There's a lot of weaves in the... At 12? 
And Andre is too far behind to really pressure buildings the way he wants to yet. He needs another 5 to 10 minutes to really be well done and ready to brawl. Oh boy, speaking of brawls, down goes the Underlord, or not quite yet, as he is just too tanky. And everybody's to turn as Viper comes in. Marvel will be the first kill of the fight. Nominate Prophet almost dead. Oracle will be first though. And set it next. Getting normal punch once again. The TV main illu from the Dark Sea wall. That thing hurts. You know what else hurts? Getting 2v1, as BD will tell you. Or Mortimer for that matter. Rip both of them. Nice turnaround. LBZS yes, keeping the game exciting. Easily getting pushed down though. That is a kill you can get yourself whenever you feel like it, provided you can stun him up or, you know, have somebody ready to hit him. We got a smoke from the side of LBZS. They know they now need favorable initiations to win. Marvel goes down to TP with the ultimate, but look at that four man vacuum wall and Illus. They're huge, especially with the Terror Blade ones. Down goes Earth Spirit for that play though. And the Vacuum Wall alone still not doing enough work as the right clicks. Uh, Underlord, he died back. 110 seconds, no Underlord. That's huge. But on the other side, Terror Blade is still alive. So e easy Y. Rest in pieces. The break is too strong for the Underlord. Meaning he takes one third more damage from the molestation they try to inflict on him. Anyone want a free trip to the base? Nope. Okay. Why does it have help? How time? Holy crap. Now Marvel jumps in, says if he can kill the Queen of Pain, we'll take the only juicier kill here. The Terror Blade. A beautiful wall means Kagame force the teleport out, break, and they get him. Terror Blade dies. 1.1k gold going around. They just wanted silver. They came looking for silver and they found gold. 90 seconds, no Terror Blade. Nature's Prophet armed and ready for some split push. And he says, hey, your carry is dead. You want to die? And it's kind of sad that he, in fact, doesn't want to die on Earth Spirit. Hey, maybe next time. Queen of Pain getting the ultimate out on two again. And that's the Aeon Disc pop from the Oracle, but Oracle's still alive. There is the huge Darkseer wall combo once again. And look at the illusions going ham. Crit means that Salad goes down even. PP will get a return kill on the Tiny, but that's one return cost. Terrible is dead for 100 seconds. 100 seconds death timer on the Underlord. 80 on the Viper. And that means it's time to do the one thing that Aegis Prophet wants to do all freaking game. Push. He doesn't even care about more fountain healing. He has an Aegis as well. And look at how fast these towers are gonna melt now. What are you gonna do? Buy back an Earth Spirit. Wow. I think it may be over. Get owned by 35 or whatever. Then suddenly you're back in this game. But LBZS, they have been underperforming since the last big catch. So I think it's a purely hero thing. Especially considering how they are some very skilled they are some very skilled players and very specific heroes present for them. They're not even gonna push for Megas anymore, just Fountain Dive and hit Ancient or hit Tier 4s and then Ancient, I guess. And yeah, more Fountain Diving. At least LBZ has played to the bitter end. Maybe they're just having fun. Kobolds are one of the nicer meme teams, that's for sure. Uh, finally they called, as only the Viper is alive. GG indeed. 2-0 for Kobold. Holy crap, I had not seen Kobold in ages. I was kinda hesitant about them. I doubted them in the first...